Hi, I'm Mark DeRuz, the founder and host of the Unconventionalist podcast. And today I'm going to explore with you the different microphones available to you so you can launch your podcast right now. Hi, and welcome back. And I'm so honored to spend some time with you today to explore the different microphones. This is by far one of the biggest questions I get from every student I teach and every budding or aspiring podcaster I meet. And that is what microphone to invest in comes up. Whether you're on a shoestring budget or you've got hundreds of dollars. Today, I'm gonna break it all down for you with sample audio so you can actually compare in real time what the microphones sound like. Now, before you panic, just know that I've got you covered. Below this video, there is a link to download the free podcast gear guide with every single description, my own personal critique and feedback on each item, as well as the links where you can find them online to buy them so you make sure you get the right model. So you don't need to fret and stress about taking notes, relax, listen and watch, and then go and download your free guide straight after this video. Okay. So number one, this may sound almost silly, but I often say to people in every single class or workshop that I teach, I always say, do you have a smartphone? Does everybody have a smartphone here? And if the answer is yes, then realistically you could start your podcast right now. Sure, it may not be the best audio quality out there on the market, but most of the time you'd be surprised that what's really getting in the way of you launching your podcast isn't necessarily the gear. And this video is going to debunk all that and you'll have no excuses by the end of it because you'll know exactly what kind of microphone is right for you. But if all you have right now is a smartphone, you could start with that. So here's what I recommend you do. On your smartphone, you should have a voice memo app. It's this one right here. I want you to launch your voice memo app and then press record. Now, as you can see, the sound is slightly different and depending on how far I put the microphone or how close I put the microphone, the quality of the audio changes. So you could record some voice memos or some intros of your podcast. Actually, I've seen people like Lewis Howe sometimes used to do his uh, Friday episodes, his solo rounds um, on his smartphone when he's traveling and he sends that to his team to edit his podcast. But as you can notice, you have to be careful with the distance of where you put it. I've actually also got a friend, JP Davillier, who launched his podcast uh, by just using his phone and putting in between two people and having a conversation with it. Now, the truth is, the sound quality isn't optimal. But if you want to start off with a budget and you've got a smartphone ready, you're good to go. Oh, and of course, when you're done, press stop and make sure to name it something memorable that you can remember when you're going to upload it on your iTunes profile. So you might want to say, today, for example, I say audio iPhone V1. Boom. And I save it. Okay, and then I plug into my laptop, I can export the file onto my desktop and then start editing if I'm using that as, as a software. Okay, so the next piece of kit, if you're still within a budget, is the SmartLab Plus lapel mic. Now, uh, again, all these resources are gonna be in the guide below. Uh, but this is a, a nifty little piece of kit that I've had with me pretty much since day one and that I've been using a lot. I use it for my vlogs usually, so normally I wouldn't record the audio off this uh, camera, but I would have this plugged into my shirt. I'm gonna show you why this is a great little piece of kit. I think it's at the moment about 40 pounds, um, so it's just under 50 pounds, but it's super versatile. It's very light, it's very compact, you can travel with it everywhere you go. And uh, here's a little pro tip for you. I actually use this every single time I give a talk or a public appearance. I use this and record my own audio, even though I might get it afterwards by the organizers, I record my own audio so that I can control and edit and also upload and post it on my podcast. So you might've heard a bunch of my live talks. It was all recorded on that. This specific lapel microphone is specially designed for smartphones. So you plug it in your jack of your smartphone and uh, you might wanna be putting this through your shirt so that the cable doesn't come across, especially if you're um, recording a video or if you're on stage, you clip it in and you've guessed it. Next thing you do is you launch your voice memo app. Now, I'm gonna do a live demo for you so that you can compare the volume of what this one sounds like. So hopefully the audio that you're hearing right now is from the lapel mic directly into my smartphone. Hopefully the audio is slightly better than what you were hearing if it was just coming out of the camera. And hopefully it's also a bit better than what you heard previously if I was just speaking into my phone. So you could use this as a sort of budget microphone to record your podcast. Uh, if you were really ghetto and, and scrappy, you could probably use it and use it as an interface to interview someone else. 
Uh, it's maybe a little less awkward to use that microphone back and forth rather than the phone back and forth. But this was to give you an example of what this sounds like. And as always, once you're done, press done and give it a memorable name. Next up, we have the Zoom H1 Handy Recorder. Now, the reason why I mention this little piece of kit is when I used to be the country manager at the Mibum Foundation for four years, I used to do a lot of media interviews. So I'd be interviewed on TV, on national radio, and newspapers and so forth. And one day, a French journalist came to see me and interviewed me with this little piece of kit. And I was surprised that he was using this for a national radio. And I asked him if the quality was good and he said it was great. And I heard my interview later on that day on, on the radio and indeed the sound was actually really good. Now, admittedly, he had a windshield protector on it, also known as dead cat for some reason, but I wanted to show you the difference. So it's very, very light. Now it uses a micro SD card, so you will need a SD card adapter if you want to put it in your laptop. This is what the microphone sounds like when it's far away. Now it's set up as it's an automatic volume, so it should really about be the same volume if I have it very close, maybe it's saturated a little bit, or if I have it quite far. And hopefully you can tell the difference between with it or without it. And again, I'm playing with distances so you can see the difference. Now, something you might want to know is that actually you can use your H1 with your Smart Plus Lavelle microphone, but here's the thing. You need to buy an adapter. It's called a Rode SC3. Again, all the details are in the free podcast gear guide that you can download below this video. And you're going to need to plug this into your lapel mic and then plug this into your microphone or line in into your H1. Without this, it won't work. Now, the thing is, it actually fits the same size, so it gets really frustrating if you don't know that, but it's because what they use an amplifier for your phone or for your H1 is slightly different. And so again, this is like the creme de la creme. If you wanna do a great audio, especially if you're doing vlogs and video, you wanna have this plugged into your H1. And I'm gonna show you right now the difference in quality. So hopefully now you're hearing me through the H1 and the quality is quite crisp. Hopefully it's not too saturated. Unfortunately, I don't have my earplugs in to be able to control the volume, but really you can get a sense of what the audio sounds like. Again, a nifty little piece of kit. By the way, this retails usually at about 120 pounds, but if you follow the link in my gear guide as of today when this video is published, it's 80 pounds. So it's a decent little piece of kit at a decent price. Okay, next up is the Blue Yeti USB Microphone Black Edition. Now I've been asked often, what's the difference between the different editions? Frankly, I don't know apart from the price. And when I was looking at the different USB microphones, most YouTubers and podcasters were recommending the Black Edition. So I just went straight with this one. So what I like about it is, is that it's actually quite sturdy. It's quite weighty. And um, when you put it on your table, it doesn't move. The flip side is that it's not very convenient to transport. It comes with a USB microphone, so all you need is a laptop and you're good to go. If you intend to host your podcast on your own, then this is a great option. Or maybe you want to record the intro and outros of your interviews, and this is also a great option. If you go back and listen to 80% of my podcasts, every intro and every outro I've ever done is more or less using this microphone. This would normally be on a desk in front of you, or you might want to buy a mount on your desk that looks more like a radio studio style. But this is what the Blue Yeti USB Black Edition sounds like. As you can tell, the sound should be way crispier than my camera. Now, um, the only thing about this microphone is that, as you can tell, the more I come closer, the more it's loud and saturated. The further I go away, the least you can hear me. Now, there are a bunch of settings on this microphone that you can get some more information about on some other YouTube channels. So hopefully by now you can hear the difference in my voice that is slightly different than the audio from my camera. The closer I come to the microphone, the deeper my voice should be, but also maybe saturating a little bit. And the further I go away, the least you should be able to hear me. So this is something just to keep in mind when you're doing your podcast, when you're doing your interviews. Always remember to set the microphone and adjust it to the tone of your voice and also the kind of volume that you want out of it. So that was the Blue Yeti USB Microphone Black Edition. And if you buy it on Amazon, you should be getting roughly between 110 and 120 pounds. Next up, we have probably my favorite mics of all, and that is my Zoom H4n. Now this really is an audio recording system as opposed to just a microphone, but this has got a little personal history. It was the same audio device that we used to record my video CV. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure to click in the link below this video. It's, it's been viewed at the time of this recording just over 300,000 times. 
and so I bought it off my friend who's a filmmaker uh, as a second hand, that's why it's got some tape around it. Actually the reason why it's got an elastic band is I lent it to a friend who broke it and then pretended like it was always broken. It wasn't. Thanks mate. This is a great little piece of kit because you can have two microphones coming out of it. All you're going to need are two sets of cables and two microphones. I'm also a big fan of windshield protectors. If you go back and listen to my interview with Danny Bent, I was actually outdoors next to a construction site and you can barely hear us. The reason why I love this piece of kit is first of all, an emotional connection. I've been using it for over two years now. Every single face-to-face -face interview I've ever done, apart from maybe one, was done using this piece of kit. It's an SD card, make sure to buy a huge memory and always have some spare batteries and if you can, plug it in the wall. All you gotta do is plug in one end of the cable inside your H4N and the other in the microphone. Here goes nothing. Hopefully you should be able to hear the difference in the sound quality between the camera and the microphone. So as you notice, I actually keep my microphone on my chin and I ask all my guests to do the same. I just find that that's the best audio quality. But the inconvenience with this microphone, especially when you hold it, despite the fact that you totally forget about it, is that if anybody puts the microphone far away, can you hear the difference? Can you hear how little you can hear me right now? Always go tell your guests to put the microphones back on the chin. But that is probably one of the best audio qualities you'll get, especially if you're looking to do face-to-face -face interviews. Again, this one, my favorite piece of kit. You most definitely can find this one on eBay, probably cheaper than you would find on Amazon. It's just around 200 pounds. And a word of warning, if you're looking to host your podcast with someone else and you're looking to interview maybe two people and you'll need three to four microphones, this is not the best microphones out there. What you'll want is to buy the Zoom H5, which effectively gives you four different inputs for your microphones. It's the same kind of system except you get to have four instead of just two. In case you're wondering what does the Zoom H4n sound like without any input and just using the external uh, microphones on it, I thought I'd give you a little demo. So if you hear me now, you probably don't hear me very well, but the closer I get, probably the louder I am. I've been told that you can use this to record concerts and put it in the middle of an interview and it can work, but for me I haven't quite found the settings yet because it sounds like I'm quite far and that sounds like I'm actually really close. So, but if you can figure out the settings, that could work. I just wanted to give you an idea of what it sounds like without using any microphones and just purely the Zoom H4n. Which brings me to the last microphone I wanna test with you today, and that is the combination of the Focusrite Scarlett 212 second generation along with the Audio-Technica BPHS1. Now this combination is exactly the same combination that Lewis Howes has from the School of Greatness podcast. I've got to be honest, I haven't actually used this as much because I haven't figured out how to make it work as powerfully as Lewis Howes. However, I know that the great thing about it is that when both you and your guests have a headset, although you may look totally ridiculous and feel like you're on the sideline of a rugby game or a football game and about to come on Sky Sports, the truth is you have your hands free and you don't have to worry about the volume of the microphone. You can look left and right, you can drink, you can go forward, you can go back, and you never have to worry about your guests not getting the right audio quality because they're too far from the microphone. So this is a good combination. It's a little bit more complex to set up and you do need a laptop with you to record as this amplifier is plugged into your laptop and then the microphones are plugged into the amplifier. All you have to do is plug in one part of the jack in the front of your Focusrite Scarlett 2 on 2 and then on the back. That's kind of the setting that I have. And then obviously it comes with a USB cable that you plug in directly into your laptop or your MacBook. In this case, I use a MacBook. Okay, so once it's plugged in, you'll want to put the headset on and as you can see, I feel like I'm about to comment on a uh, sports game or a match. Uh, I haven't had time to actually double check the audio on the recording, but I'm using for this particular recording Audacity, a free software that you can use as well. And hopefully you can hear the difference now in the audio quality from just the camera alone and using this microphone. So you can adjust the um, the microphone as you hear. It can rattle a little bit. And um, and yeah, and, and the great thing is that actually I can hear myself speak and my guests can also hear themselves speak, which is a huge difference than when you're plugging directly these sets into the Zoom H4n, which I've done. You can't actually hear yourselves directly through the headset. So this is the last combination microphone I wanted to share with you. This is definitely the pricier option out of everything I've shown you. Just the Scarlett 2i2 alone is roughly around 120 pounds. And then the Audio-Technica headset is at least 180 pounds each. 
So you're looking at a much heavier investment than anything else I've shown. I hope that was helpful. Please let me know what microphone you decided to go for. Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to keep me posted about your podcast. And I hope you go out there and launch your podcast. If you need some help in launching your podcast or coming up with your idea, or if you want to find out a bit more about editing or how to create the perfect interviews for your show, make sure to come and check out one of my live events where I teach you how to launch your podcast. And I cannot wait to see you there. Until then, good luck, go and create, and spread your message like wildfire. Mm -hmm.